name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Dear brothers and sisters, let us humbly beseech the Lord our God to bless this water he has created, which will be sprinkled on us as a memorial of our baptism on this feast of the baptism of the Lord. May he help us by his grace to remain faithful to the spirit we have received. Almighty, ever-living God, who willed that through water, the fountain of life, the source of purification, even souls should be cleansed, and receive the gift of eternal life. Be pleased, we pray, to bless this water by which we seek protection on this your day, O Lord. Renew the living spring of your grace within us and grant that by this water we may be defended from all ills of spirit and body. And so we approach you with hearts made clean and worthily receive your salvation through Christ our Lord. Almighty God, cleanse us of our sins and through the celebration of this Eucharist. Make us worthy to share at the table of his kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on the earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you. We glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God Almighty Father, Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, we thank you in the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. 
You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. Almighty, ever-living God, who in Christ has been baptized in the river Jordan and as the Holy Spirit descended upon him, solemnly declared him your beloved Son, grant that your children by adoption reborn of water and the Holy Spirit may always be well-pleasing to you, through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord, here is my servant whom I uphold, my chosen one with whom I am pleased, upon whom I have put my spirit, he shall bring forth justice to the nations, not crying out, not shouting, not making his voice heard in the street. A bruised reed he shall not break, and a smoldering wick he shall not quench until he establishes justice on the earth. The coastlands will wait for his teaching. I, the Lord, have called you for the victory of justice. I have grasped you by the hand. I formed you and set you as a covenant of the people, a light for the nations, to open the eyes of the blind, to bring out prisoners from confinement and from the dungeon those who live in darkness. The word of the Lord.
ascribe to the Lord your heavenly powers. Ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. Ascribe to the Lord the glory of his name. Bow down before the Majestic in holiness. The Lord will bless his people with peace. The voice of the Lord upon the waters. The city of waters, the voice of the Lord full of power, the voice of the Lord full of enthroned above the flood. The Lord lives as King forever. The Lord will bless his people with A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Peter proceeded to speak to those gathered in the house of Cornelius, saying, In truth, I see that God shows no partiality. Rather, in every nation, whoever fears him and acts uprightly is acceptable to him. You know the word that he sent to the Israelites as he proclaimed peace through Jesus Christ, who is Lord of all what has happened all over Judea, beginning in Galilee after the baptism that John preached, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and power. He went about doing good and healing all those oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. The word of the Lord. of the Father thundered. This is my beloved Son, listen to
The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to thee, O Lord. This is what John the Baptist proclaimed. One mightier than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to stoop and loosen the thongs of his sandals. I have baptized you with water. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. It happened in those days that Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized in the Jordan by John. On coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens being torn open and the Spirit, like a dove, descending upon him. And a voice came from the heavens, You are my beloved Son. With you I am well pleased. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. After Christmas, which obviously is over uh, now, there is one part of Christmas that probably keeps our attention focused uh, for a few more weeks afterwards, and that's the gifts that maybe we received or gave to others. Now, when I was a kid, we had this family on our block, and they just went crazy buying gifts for their kids. At least I thought it was crazy, and my parents thought it was crazy, because mine would, I would get like one or two gifts, but they're literally, and I'm not exaggerating, each kid, and they had three, would get about 50 to 60 gifts. And in fact, they would count them all and then call over on Christmas afternoon just to tell me how many gifts they had received. Well, of course, being the bratty kid I was, I compared my haul to theirs and practically felt I was so deprived I should have called DHS on my parents for such a crappy haul for Christmas. Now, of course, the reality is I, I lived in a bubble. And at that age, I was totally oblivious that there were homeless people or things like racism or poverty or violence. And even the Vietnam War that was going on was pretty oblivious to that. And reflecting back, it was very naive to think that the world existed of just the people I knew. But the more, the older that I got, the more I realized the bubble in which I had lived and how that was not the real world. In fact, I was talking to someone the other day, and they said, you know, it would be so nice to see how the other half lives for just a while. And I looked at them, and I said, you know, we are the other half. I'm like, what? No, we're not. And they were shocked. I said, look, when 80% of the world still does not have clean water to drink, in reality, while we complain, sometimes we are the other half of the world. In fact, we're probably the 5%, if truth be told. Now, I say that not to make people feel guilty or anything like that, but as a reminder that even though there are many that are going through hardships of one kind or another, in addition to all the normal hardships, in addition, though, to all the suffering and isolation and loneliness and sickness that COVID has brought about and additional suffering, in spite of all that, there are things in our lives that we are, should be thankful for. And this weekend, we celebrate the Feast of the Baptism of the Lord. And of all the gifts that we have received in our lives, this one is by far the most important and the most lasting. When John was baptizing people, they were filled with excitement and joy. We heard that. But they were excited that John might have been Jesus. But John says, no, I am not he. He says, I can baptize you with water, but he will baptize you with the Spirit and fire. Jesus showing the ultimate in humility I guess he was Jesus, he could have baptized himself, but he had John baptize him. And as we heard, the heavens opened and the Spirit descended on him like a dove, and the voice of heaven proclaimed, You are my beloved Son, with you I am well pleased. While certainly in much less dramatic form, the same thing happens every time there is a baptism. And when Jesus was baptized, there were just a handful of people in the world now the number is into the billions. Right here, 
in our own archdiocese, according to the statistics, last year 2,642 people were baptized, roughly about 100 of those right here in our parish. Now, since most of us were baptized as infants, we don't really remember what happens. And I've been doing baptisms for, for many, many years, and I can safely say I've never had one where the heavens opened and a voice came down. I did have one once where the candle fell over and we did have a few little flames of fire going on, but that's about it. But one of the most important parts of the baptismal ritual is when our parents or godparents, or us if we're older, ask the questions. Do you renounce Satan and all his works and all his empty promises? Do you believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth? Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only son, our Lord, who was born of the Virgin Mary, suffered death and was buried and rose again from the dead and is seated at the right hand of the Father? Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting? And at the end of each set of questions, our parents or us, if we're older, say yes. Like I said, most of us don't remember our baptisms. That's why confirmation is so important, because it is our opportunity to understand and then say yes. Now, at baptism, we also receive, as we heard, the Spirit. We receive the gifts and the fruits of the Spirit, things like wisdom, understanding, counsel, fortitude, knowledge, piety, and fear of the Lord. The fruits of the Spirit are things like charity, joy, peace, patience, kindness, self-control, chastity, goodness, and generosity, just to name a few. And let's face it, with all the violence and the division, which certainly this week we, we saw it come to a new different kind of a head, certainly we need some of those gifts of the Spirit, like kindness, self-control, charity, more than ever. I, a good friend called of me on Wednesday, and he lives in Chicago and is very different than, than I, but we, we've been friends for over 40 years. And our views on the church and politics are about like this. And he called me on Thursday and just started screaming at me about everything that had happened, or Wednesday. And I said, look, why are we arguing about this? If we argue about it, it's just going to damage our friendship. We need to just come together, and so we did. But if we truly think about it, the gift of baptism is the best of all gifts. Those toys that we got when we were kids, uh, those Pac-Man games, I'm aging myself here, um, boom boxes or Xboxes, all those things have long since been replaced with newer and better, more technological things. But baptism can never, ever, ever be replaced by anything better. The spirit that descended upon Jesus does the same for us at baptism. And all those gifts and fruits of the spirit that we receive, they stick with us for our entire lives and help us to live the best lives that we can live. Now, the reality is, like those material gifts that maybe we put away or lose, we can do that with the gifts of the Holy Spirit and choose not to use them. And maybe we turn away from them from time to time, and we only think of ourselves or our own needs, and that's what can cause things like violence and division. But the good thing is we can always go back and find them and let them to be a part of our lives. On this feast, we remember the baptism that Jesus had. Now, like I said, or I may have said, I've had a little over 2,000 baptisms in 29 years. And like I said, none have had the heavens open. But each baptism, the kingdom of heaven does open to us. And our baptism is the gateway to all the other sacraments in our lives. And it opens the way for forgiveness of sins and eternal life with the Lord. So when we think of all the gifts we've ever received, this gift of faith that we receive at baptism is literally the gift that keeps on giving, not monthly or yearly, but for eternity. And what a wonderful gift that is if we really think about it. So the most important question for all of us is whether, like some Christmas gifts, we just put those gifts and fruits away, or do we use this gift of baptism in our lives? And how we use this gift that isn't up to anybody but us, because we're in total control of that. Or do we only think, is it all about me? Or do we truly care about others and helping to make the world a better place?
I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. And now let us bring our prayers to the Lord. For the church, that we may allow the Holy Spirit to empower and enlighten us, so that our lives may manifest that we are the beloved daughters and sons of God. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the United States of America, that God will guide our leaders and citizens in all deliberations, help us to work together for the common good, and inspire us with wisdom in confronting the issues of our nation. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who are preparing for baptism and for all who are newly baptized, that they may be transformed by the waters of new life and allow the Spirit of God to guide their growth in faith, wisdom, and holiness, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the grace of fidelity, that we may be faithful to God in every part of our life and that God will help us follow the commandments through loving God and our neighbor. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For an end to the coronavirus pandemic, that God will free us from this dangerous virus, heal those who are suffering, and help us rebuild our communities of faith. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died, especially Grace Salvia, Jackie Medley, and Bill Ruskowski, and for all who mourn them, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. In silent prayer, let us now mention our own special intentions. We pray to the Lord. Lord hear our Almighty God, we ask you to hear these prayers and those that we hold in our hearts. Continue to show us your mercy and your love, and we ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.
brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept your sacrifice in your name for the praise and the glory of his name, for our good and the good of all of his holy church. Accept, O Lord, the offerings we have brought to the honor, the revealing of your beloved Son, so that the oblation of your faithful may be transformed into the sacrifice of him who willed in his compassion to wash away the sins of the world, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For in the waters of the Jordan, you revealed with signs and wonders a new baptism, so that through the voice that came down from heaven, we might come to believe in your word dwelling among us. And by the spirits descending in the likeness of a dove, we might know that Christ, your servant, has been anointed with the oil of gladness and sent to bring the good news to the poor. And so with the powers of heaven, we worship you constantly on earth and before your majesty without end we acclaim. To you, therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Paul, our Bishop, and all those who, holding on to the truth, and on the Catholic and Apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants, and all gathered here whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them we offer you this sacrifice of praise, or they offered for themselves and all who are dear to them for the redemption of their souls in hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. In communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, Mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon, and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Christogenus, John and Paul, Cosmos and Damian, and all your saints. We ask that through their merits and prayers, in all things we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our servants, that of your whole family. Order our days in your peace and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O oh God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hand, and with eyes raised to heaven to you, O God, his almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this 
all of you and each of them. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hand. And once more, giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the Blessed Passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ your Son, our Lord. We, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant Abel the Just the sacrifice of Abraham, our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest, Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer, we ask you, almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high, in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants, who have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Remember especially Bill Nesby. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also, your servants who, those sinners, hope in your abundant mercy, graciously grant some share and fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon. Through Christ our Lord, to whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord, you sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress. 
as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you all. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this time, at this moment, receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Oh. 
Just a couple of announcements. Adult Wine and Bingo uh, is back next Sunday, the 17th at 7 p.m. Um, in the parish uh, formal room. Uh, please RSVP in the uh, parish life office to uh, Pam or to Kathy. Also this evening, uh, uh, one of our parish seminarians, Matthew Duff, who's been serving very faithfully at many, many masses throughout the Christmas break. Uh, he will be leaving to go back to the seminary tomorrow, and so we wish him safe travels. Uh, Matthew, we thank you for being open to exploring God's call in your life, and know that you will continue to be in our prayers, and, and God bless you. Thank you. I'm going to have to turn my own pages now in the book, uh, so please stand. For the end of this pandemic and all the damage that it is causing, hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, Pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our defense against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Blessed Stanley Rother. Let us pray. Nourished by these sacred gifts, we humbly entreat your mercy, O Lord that faithfully listening to your only begotten Son, we may be your children in name and in truth, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.